Hello everybody and welcome to this video about SIMS. SIMS is our management information system which stores all information about students, parents, their timetables, attendance, behaviour and can give you a little bit more data into student special educational needs, dietary and med medical requirements. This is the first page that you will see. When you get into here, you're going to see your timetable. You'll also see some of these little boxes that you can customise and we'll come back to that later. Generally, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a register. To take a register, all you need to do is click on the um, class just here and it will open up in um, with all the names. Now, you won't be able to see the names here because I have blanked them out. But all you need to do is mark in the in the lesson um, the different data, whether the student's in or not, whether they're late. Uh, and to mark a student late, if you just right click and enter minutes late, that will uh, go directly to the year leaders and they will be able to see that. There are several different views that you can have a look at as well. When you're going to have to enter marks, you can see just at the top here, there are mark sheets which will be populated when you come to that. Um, and that's how you can add data for a student. Down the right hand side, you'll also see there's a series of different tabs. Um, for each of the different students, you can have a look at their photo, their behavior. You can add a behavior for a student. So if you need to add um, detentions or consequences on, you can use the behavior tabs down the side. And you can see that student's timetable, attendance, and lots of different things over there. If you wanted to add a behavior, you'd click on the behavior management and then a new screen would appear. You then need to click on new just here. Select the type of behavior, whether that's a, con a C1, a C2 or a C3. Uh, you can choose any of these. So I'm just going to choose one of those just here. You make sure you record the correct date. You might want to put a little bit more information in just to remind you if you want to see that. But remember to add comments in here to say what has happened in this situation. These comments, though, can be seen by parents, so please be careful about what comments you type into this box because it will reflect on you as a professional. Uh, so try and keep that factual um, but appropriate for parental gateway. You can decide to put resolved or unresolved. Now, resolved means that everything's finished with it. There's nothing to do. You might put unresolved because there's something that you still need to work on. You might need to go and speak to somebody or there might be a detention in the future. So if I just change that to resolved for now, there are a few other options that you can do. When you're adding a detention, you can add a detention on by using this button here. Uh, and you can say whether you've informed parents by telephone, email, fax or letter about a detention that you have given. Remember, the office will support you in sending out letters for detentions if you want to do that. Uh, and it, when the first time you do that, it's worth speaking to your head of department for a little bit of support on adding those details. Likewise, you can also achieve, uh, add achievement points. If you click on the top, students get extra achievement points for uh, outstanding performance uh, that might be in sport, in class, or for a position of responsibility. You can give these as well for citizenship uh, and even 10 bonus points for out of school activities. So if I go back to my home screen, uh, what I can do then is I can customize my home page. If you are a form tutor, you might want some information on your home page, such as the one you can see for my form. This is my attendance summary for my form. And you can see at the moment the percentage attendance and I've got some authorised absences, uh, but no unauthorised absences. So there's nothing I need to chase up there. Now to add a new box on, you need to go to the configure tab in the top right hand corner. Once you've clicked on this, this is the grid that you see just on uh, behind this box. So all the different widgets are here. So if I want to add something across, so let's say this time I want to add a conduct summary. So all I need to do is just drag that from here to here. Click OK and you'll see a new box will appear. Now, in the moment it's blank. That's because we need to now tell it what we want to show. To customize that, if we click on the down arrow and click configure, it's going to bring up, bring up a little bit of more information and we can decide what we want to put in. 
we can give it a title or a name and how long we want that to show. So do you want to show it from the previous day? So every day you get to form, you can see if anybody's got any behavior points the previous day or just for today, or do you want to do it for the previous week? You can decide which one you want to do. So I'm going to do previous day. And then I can decide whether I want to see achievement points, behavior points, and what I want in my report. Everything on the right hand side is going to be included in your report. So, for example, it will tell me at the moment the achievement points that my form have achieved and all behavior types. Maybe I'm having a focus on homework. What I can do is I can remove everything and I can add individual items in. So I might want just to focus on homework initially. And if I add that in, that's going to add it to my widget. And I click OK and you'll see my box will update. Now, I'm not, sh I'm not sure if any of my form have had C2s for inadequate homework in the last day. So in fact, let's just change that to previous month. Uh, and I need to select the form actually first. So my form is 12.7. So I need to make sure that is ticked. If you are a year manager, you can tick more of these if you want to. Uh, and you need something, uh, a title. Mine's saying at the moment, it won't let me click OK, because the title is the same as one that I've already got. So I'm going to do behavior. And I'm going to click OK. Now there's no data to show. We are only in the second week and none of my form have got behavior points. So that's fantastic news, but they will appear here daily uh, and that will automatically update. So you'll be able to see anybody with behavior points. Now, in Sims, you have a toolbar across the top. This first button here is quite useful and allows you to go to the student teacher view. Now, unfortunately, it's, it'd be quite hard for me to show this um, in a video recording without having to blank it out. But if you wanted to search for a certain student, you could just click in here and start typing a student's name and it should bring up the same view looking here. Now, once you've found a student, I'm going to find a student now and I'm going to bring up um, the student by clicking on them and it brings you to that student view that you might have seen before. Now there's an awful lot of personal information here that I've obviously had to blur out but you can see the timetable in the middle of the day, you can see the student's attendance summary, you can see any achievement points or conduct points that they have uh, achieved that day and a little bit more information on that student. Now, once you, this is kind of an overview of the student, you can also go into the top just here, and there's a little down arrow where you can have a look at that student's SEN, behavior management, timetable, attendance, etc. Now, when you're inside a class, you can also find out quite a lot of information. So it might be useful for you to add an extra column. Now, it might be that I want to know which of my students are pupil premium. Uh, what I can do is if I right click, I can add extra columns. So I right clicked on name here. If I click on pupil premium, it tells me which students are pupil premium. I can do the same for SEN and for gender, uh, for EAL and all sorts of different things, which might be useful information for you when you're taking a register. There's also a class photo here so you can have a look at the students photos. Uh, if you wanted to identify somebody, you can add that on there as well. It may be useful at times to find a teacher's timetable to find out where they are or what room they're in. And this button can be found just by clicking on this one here. This will take you to the staff timetables. You can then search through the members of staff and it will give you a timetable for them. So I'm just going to search for myself, bring up my details. And then if you look on the right hand side, you can see my timetable and that will come up and it will show you which classes I've got and where. There are some different options that come up at the top so you can show class codes. And if you just click on the class, that will bring up the class that this class here that I am in at the moment. Um, there are a few other things you can do on here, but that's probably the main thing that you would want to do. There are hundreds of other things that you can actually do in Sims from finding room timetables, subject timetables, amending marks, um, all sorts of those kind of things. Um, if you do want to know a little bit more about Sims, one of the best places to go is at the top and see if you can find it in the toolbar. Um, 
it's fairly straightforward. Lesson monitor is looking at red marks. If you're looking at assessment, that can be a place where you can go for assessment. And you can actually design reports. So you can design a report to um, find all the pupils, let's say, for example, who uh, are eligible for the pupil premium grant in year eight uh, by designing the report. Uh, but that's quite complicated. And if you do want to know more about that, either come and speak to me or go and speak to one of the data team.